uh, today we will talk about the structural components, basic structural components. In the last class we have uh, dealt with the structural requirement that means what all the strength requirements of a structure to fulfill the desired uh, service which one expects from the product, right. So, there we saw that uh, one of it will have to look into the aspects of longitudinal strength, transverse strength, torsional strength and local strength, right. So, to provide that we also talked about framing system, how do we go about stiffening them, how do we go about providing those strengths. So, we introduced the concept of longitudinal framing system, transverse framing system. So, that framing system means essentially we talk about we deal with stiffened panels that means plates with stiffeners because for the individual plate if you want to uh, provide for the necessary strength we have to go on increasing the thickness of the plate. Then what happens we may achieve the desired strength but at the same time we increase the weight very heavily so that other requirement of strength to weight ratio gets jeopardized right. So, best thing is to go about by uh, for um, pro providing stiffness, I mean we can once again take a look at that. In case of a plate, how do we judge what is the stiffness of this plate? Say this is a, this is a cross section of a plate, so naturally you will have the neutral axis of the plate through its mid plane, right. Right. So, stiffness is a function of your moment of inertia. Right? So, here the moment of inertia is if T is the thickness and say B is the breadth of the plate, then you know the moment of inertia becomes straight away how much? It is B T cube by 12, right. So, to increase thickness, you have to go on increasing, uh, increase the moment of inertia, you have to increase the thickness, right. Instead, I take a thinner plate, right, much thinner plate and provide some stiffener here. By providing stiffener means, suppose there are two small flat bars I am welding to this plate. This is a flat bar. That means say a flat piece of plate having some thickness, whatever be it, right. So, here what happens? What is this I of this particular section? I of this section would be, well, if I calculate I about its own mid axis, I about its own mid axis and then the both the I's transferred to the so called equivalent neutral axis of the entire system. Now, the neutral axis is shifted from the mid plane of the plate, this is a shift of the neutral axis taking place. So, we benefit by this component, right. Also, this component, say this is my D, say D1, this is D2. How do we benefit? Because whatever the own moment of inertia we are getting of the flat bar, plus we are getting of the plate, plus because of the shift in the neutral axis that is actually area of the well the flat bars into that d2 square is not it. This additional terms also here we get the area of the this plate cross sectional area into d1 square is not it some such thing will happen. So, here these are the two additional components we are getting. That means, when we weld the two such uh, flat bars, I mean I believe you can understand what is this. It is if we see in a schematic, uh, in a isometric 
form it's essentially like this say this is a plate right and here you have this this one is welded right similarly another one i have drawn two of them some such thing two plates welded to the plate to the base plate right these are acting as this one and this one acting as stiffener adding stiffening the system so this can be referred to as a stiffened panel well so how how it is so if we, if we compare this moment of inertia what we are getting here and that of this we will see the moment of inertia in the second case is much higher compared to the first one. If you want to match it to that of the first one, then what we will find the weight of this and weight of this system there will be a gross difference. The second one will be much will have a much higher strength to weight ratio that means weight will be much less for the same stiffness right. Anyway, so that is how thing is uh, we go about uh, using stiffened panels which will provide us the necessary strength. Now, depending on the orientation of the stiffeners, primary stiffeners, secondary stiffener, etc., we will say either it is a longitudinally stiffened system or a transversely stiffened system because we have seen we have to provide for longitudinal strength, transverse strength and so on. So, we will make use of combination of both these longitudinal framing system as well as transverse framing system. Now, to provide for this uh, standarding what now we will go back again what you need is certain basic structural components. So, what are those basic structural components? They are those basically plates and stiffeners right. Basic structural components are nothing but plates and stiffeners right. What are those stiffeners? Plates, well, plates are standard. I mean, in shipbuilding practice, generally there is a the plates which are used as they come from the steel mill, they are of standard sizes, standard rectangular sizes. The sizes which are available generally are 10 meter long by 2 meter wide. 10 by 2 or we get 10 by 2.5 or we have option for 10 by 3 meter. Generally, these are the three standard sizes we get. So, when you when you are uh, designing a sh ship or any such thing, you have to do the plate estimate how much plate is needed. So, eventually you will have to convert it to number of such sizes. So, these are the overall size and obviously, you have to tell the thickness also, is not it. So, thicknesses are available, thickness in short it is generally referred to as THK. Thicknesses are available generally at an interval of 0.5 millimeter to a certain thickness and then at an interval of 1 millimeter. That means, plates will be available at 4 millimeter, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 6, 6.5 and so on. And then possibly after say, I think so, uh, maybe after 12 or 14, then is 15, 16, 17 and so on. And then again, when you exceed 35, it is 35, 40, 50, 60, 65. Uh, like that. So, at certain interval of thicknesses that means you have a wide choice right. So, you can accordingly design a, your thing so that you satisfy the strength requirement and definitely look into the aspect of not over strengthening it that means provide for the necessary thickness of the plate. So, that is one, one side as far as the plates are concerned. Next are the stiffeners because you will have to use we have just seen how the stiffeners they play a role. So, the stiffeners are 
they are essentially uh, they can be classified as two types one is they are referred to as rolled steel sections here we are talking primarily of steel construction same thing is uh, to some extent true for aluminum construction also so here primarily of steel so stiffeners uh, one type of stiffeners are referred to as rolled steel sections another are uh, can be referred as fabricated sections right rolled steel sections fabricated sections okay what are these rolled steel sections? They are flat bars right. This flat bar is nothing but so it will be designated by some D into T d is the depth right and t is the thickness so it is designated by d into t generally it is written like this this symbol implies that it is a flat bar and 100 into 10 means 100 is the depth, 10 is the thickness and length well again it comes in some standard length generally 20 meter right. So, length is not the direct criteria, criteria is depth and thickness because length you will have to ultimately the length of say the deck of a ship you are strengthening it you are putting stiffeners. So, naturally you will not only put whatever the length of one stiffener is available, you will go on adding it. If the length of the deck is 100 meter, you will have a 100 meter continuous stiffener say I mean all the stiffeners will be 100 meter long, but you do not get 100 meter, you will get in pieces same thing the deck is 100 meter long, you do not get 100 meter plate, you get 10 meter long plate. So, as if we will put 10 plates and weld them together right. So, in any case rolled steel section. So, the first one is referred to as flat bar right. Then next is uh, another rolled steel section is a uh, angle section. They look like this. or that means this is unequal angle this is equal angle that is all unequal angle equal angle that means in this case when you talked about flat bar flat bar means it is as if a piece of plate having certain depth. This depth just assume if this depth becomes 2 meter then it becomes a plate. So, obviously, you will not have a flat bar of 2 meter depth then it is no more a bar it is a plate. So, here what is what we want to say is these bars are not cut from these plates they are rolled like that that is why they are referred to as rolled steel sections like steel plates they are rolled how they are manufactured you have any idea the steel plates it is well if we if we start from the zeroth level that means you take the iron ore and extract iron then convert it to steel then what do you get we get steel ingots ingots means steel of quite big chunks of steel as if so, those ingots are passed through rollers, several multiple rollers, which are generally referred to as rolling mill, right. You pass through the rollers and they are 
gradually roll down to the required thickness just for schematically it would look something like this This is a multi stage rolling. As you can see, gradually the thickness is going down. Right? A thick ingot is passed through a set of rollers gradually, which is pressing it down. This rolling is done hot rolling, it is at a elevated temperature when the ingot is cast <coughs> and having an elevated temperature of around 800 plus degree centigrade it is passed through the rollers. So, it will gradually squeeze it down and bring it to the desired level. The final set of rollers will be set if you are producing say 20 millimeter thick steel plates. So, they will be set accordingly such that the end you are getting 20 millimeter thickness. Okay. In any case, Similarly, these flat bars also will be rolled of different depths. This different depth will vary from say, well, it can be small flat bars of say 20 25 millimeter depth to big flat bars of 300 millimeter depth. Generally, we do not go more. There are certain standard sizes. What the standard? It is not that you think that okay, let me make 100. 72.5 millimeter depth flat bar. No, it is not that way. There are certain standards set and those standards are globally accepted. There are Indian standards, there are Japanese standard, there are French standard, German standard, British standard, but they are generally close by similar. Because you design a structure, the final design is you have to match it with what is available in the market. You cannot design a say a deck I am designing and the optimum design says that it should have a plate thickness of 16.35 millimeter thickness and stiffness of some dimensions of 285.32. It does not make sense because 285.32 will not get anywhere neither you will get 16.25 no you will get either 16.5 or maybe from 16 you will get straight 17 but your optimum design calculation says that if it is 16 point say 35 or 34 whatever it doesn't make sense you have to go for 17 millimeter thick plate because that is available this you cannot get it in the sense of made to order rolling is not done you cannot do that okay so there are standards so flat bar well so it can be 300 millimeter depth of different thicknesses okay so that is what is flat bar and then i've been talking about angle sections that is the next set of these what do you call rolled steel sections these are designated like this say two hundred by two hundred by sixteen means this is two hundred, this is two hundred and sixteen is the thickness. You can see at the edge it is thinning down. So not that thickness, the average thickness whatever in in both these arms these arms are referred to as generally the longer arm is referred to as web and the shorter arm is referred to as flange in a equal section it is both are same right unequal section it can be like this 200 by 125 by 12 it will be written like this whenever you make a drawing suppose 
Ja, mede. Mede. Uh, drawing of a flat stiffened plate. In, and in the drawing, in the plan view, you will show like this. As if the plates are having three stiffeners. Right? So, it is enough if I write this like this. If I write like this, that implies that that dotted line indicates there is an angle section of 200 by 125 by 12 welded, right. So, that is what is the uh, what do you call rolled steel section, and, uh, one of the rolled steel sections, angle section. <coughs> Well, and 12 or 16, they are the thicknesses, this this thickness, okay. Then uh, next roll steel sections which are used uh, are T section, as the name you can see. like this right T section. So, here <coughs> this is my depth actually this depth is used right. So, here is the thickness and you have another thickness here. Till now all thicknesses were same. Now, here in this case you can have different thickness, a thickness for the web and a thickness for the flange. So, here this one is the web right. So, this is designated as uh, suppose uh, Say two seventy five by twelve one fifty by sixteen, like this, right? Two seventy five by twelve slash one fifty by sixteen. What does that mean? That means the web is of depth two seventy five, thickness twelve millimeter. And the flange is breadth 150 millimeter, thickness 16 millimeter, right. So, if we change these figures, the moment of inertia changes, right. So, where from we are getting all these? These are, of course, a different issue that we will we'll be getting from certain type of calculations, where from I mean, which will tell us what should be the dimensions of these stiffeners, which will provide us with the required section modulus because the section modulus is the measure of the stiffness of the structure, rigidity of the structure or the strength of the structure, right. These are all referred to as scantlings as I was telling some time back, scantlings. This term is used like the stiffness scantlings are 275 by 12, 150 by 16, T section, 200 by 200 by 16, angle section, scantlings. This is a term, right, a nomenclature that refers to the dimension. So, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Generally, the wave first and flange next. What happens is by convention the wave is having a higher depth compared to the breadth of the flange, compared to the breadth of the flange. Now, what is the contribution of this flange and uh, I mean 
why this concept of wave and flange? What is the difference between a stiffener which is flat bar and a stiffener which is a angle section? Okay, let me complete. There is another. Uh, that then we'll come to this question again. Another rolled steel section is referred to as bulb section. Bulb section. What is this? It is somewhat like this. A section of it looks something like this. That means, as if there is a bulb attached at the end, right? How do we designate it? We designate it like this. There is a difference. I have drawn something. So, it refers that it is a bulk section because if I do not do this, then 200 by 12 can be a flat bar, can be a bulb. So, just to distinguish, this is the difference. So, tell me what, what is the great difference between this and this. That will take take us back to what we started. Uh, I, I drew one flat bar, then an angle. Anyway, we talked about the bulb section. So, they are somewhat similar. Only thing a bulb section is that as if at the end of the flat bar, I have put a bulb. Now, suppose there is a, I have one bulb section wherein this 200 means this is 200, right? flat bar 200 means this is 200 and both are of same thickness. So, what is the great difference between these two? Well, uh, I am I'm, I'm, I'm coming to the next thing. Suppose you assume a plate which is being stiffened. This is a plate cross section. The length is going like this, right. So, herein I want to stiffen it. Stiffening it means what? Means as if there is a stiffener flat bar I am welding to the plate both sides. That is what we are doing, right? So, this flat bar I am putting it here, showing the flat bar by one single line because when we will be making the drawings, we will not show double lines. For the simple reason, when you draw in scale, this double line cannot be shown because this breadth can be 10 meters and thickness is 10 millimeter. It is impossible to show, is not it? So, customarily we show by single line, but now for the sake of just explaining, we are showing in double lines, right. Another case where in the same plate and I am using the flat bar. Now, tell me you see how I put the flat bar, not the flat bar, the bulb section. Anyway, right and this is welded here. Similar, this is also welded here. Is that will these two structures have different strength stiffness or they will be identical? I am putting of the same dimension. Obviously, because since the stiffness are different, has to be different. Now, which one will be stronger? The bulb one. Why? Huh? Tell me, uh, I mean, you are, you are coming to the correct. Uh, point definitely, but tell me before putting this bulb like this is easier or it shifts the neutral axis more further, right. So, that is the purpose of flange basically, 
like we will come to this again let us come back to this uh, angle section and the flat bar say a case of a plate and I am just putting a flat bar. So, I have shifted the neutral axis somewhere here. Let us assume the same thing a plate and an angle section. See, I have put the flange above. In this way, fixing it, welding it is very difficult because you put the angle section, it will fall, is not it? But the other way, if I would have put from fabrication point of view, it would have been easier. But this is nothing but a case of flat bar basically, because this flange then is not contributing much, because what do we need? We need that particular component, that A D square component, that D, D distance between the two neutral axis. Right. So, this is not done, this is not practice. Instead, it is like this, though putting it is difficult, that means you will have to have mechanism to hold the angle section in that form. It is an unstable condition, is not it? You have to hold it, weld it. Once it is welded, it is fine, it remains. Well, the flat bar also. So, what would be the difference in this case? Your shift on neutral axis will be much larger. Here it was D, here it was say multiple of D, maybe 2D or whatever more. So, that is the thing of this flange, right. So, that is how the flange works. That is what is happening here also. The bulb section, we put it like this. This bulb is equivalent to that of as if I have the flat bar and a rod, the circular thing, if I weld it, also does the same trick. Because my purpose was here the neutral axis was shifted to this much, here the neutral axis was shifted sufficiently, same here also. But here what I am doing, I am fabricating it. We have talked about fabricated sections. So, this can be referred to as a fabricated bulb section, the second one. It is a fabricated bulb section, means it is not truly the bulb section what we get in the rolled steel category. These bulb sections angle sections, flat bars, T bars, all those are you get it standard rolled steel sections, they are rolled from the steel mill. You have standard sizes, various sizes though, but standard, right. Supposing you have a very non-standard requirement, wherein you need a certain particular section modulus, which is not fitting very much in your uh, available sections. What do you do if it is not fitting? We look for the next higher. What does that mean? That means, suppose my uh, calculations show that you need a section modulus, the section modulus requirement for a certain stiffener is say 327 centimeter cube. Calculations say like this you look in the standard tables, standard charts which which are available I mean from different manufacturers. So, there I find that there is a say a angle section available whose section modulus is 320 centimeter cube. Then the next one is available which is 330 but my requirement was 327. So, I will have to choose this one, that is what, right. Now, suppose a situation wherein I need a section modulus of 5000 and I check in the tables, I do not find definitely it will not be available in flat bar, also not in bulb section, also not in angle, probably in T sections. 
because T will give more because you have more material there, isn't it? A full web and a full flange, right? But there also, let us say the maximum T we are getting is, say, four thousand five hundred, and we are not getting beyond that. Then what to do? We'll have to have a fabricated stiffener, fabricated stiffener or a fabricated section. So, what are that fabricated sections are? Basically, what we will do? We will find out the dimensions of the web and the dimensions of the flange. Now, obviously, you will have a many combinations are possible. This web will be basically your depth of web into thickness of web, breadth of flange into thickness of flange, is not it? So, a many combination of these two will give you the required section modulus actually, is not it? So, you will have to choose the one which suits you best. because you can have very deep web and a small flange or a shorter web, thicker web and a wider flange, right? Because it is all I by Y is nothing but a, it is a function of the geometry, is not it? Section modulus is nothing but essentially a function of geometry. So, go on changing geometry, different combination of geometry of both web and flange will give you the same value 5000, whatever you are looking for. So, you will have to then see which one suits you best, right. And then what is done essentially is you will have to, you will have to cut uh, this necessary depth to thickness and breadth thickness these, these two from, from standard plates. You cut out the flange this thickness and this T f may be different. So, from another plate you cut out the web, put them together and weld it, right. So, this is what is your fabricated T section. So, weld it and you get the fabricated T section. So, wherein generally the bigger component is web and the shorter or narrower is the flange and generally your thickness of flange is greater than thickness of web, right. That is generally so for the simple reason. Why? Why not the other way? Why not the thickness of web is more than the thickness of flange? By making thickness of flange more, I shift push the needle axis further, is not it? Further if I can push, I gain more in terms of that A D square component. So, thereby for the same weight, I have more moment of inertia. So, it becomes a better design, I get more strength, stiffness. For the same reason again, well and, and, and for the same reason again, the depth of this wave D W is generally greater than breadth of the flange, because more the depth, more your neutral axis is going away and always these are welded. So, this is my plate, if a T section is welded, it will be welded like this. It will be welded here obviously, because then I have my neutral axis of the system stiffened panel away from the plate, much away. So, we have more stiffness. So, that is the basic, well there are many more rolled steel sections, but these are the four types which are mostly used in shipbuilding. So, we are not going for I sections, H sections, there are <coughs> different sections also like I which is nothing but somewhat like this, right. 
so these are not not much used so we are not going for that mostly used are because what happens if i use this i section the one side of the flange becomes useless right <coughs> at best these i sections can be used as pillar where you need a pillar so probably i section or somebody refers to it as h section can be used as a pillar otherwise for stiffening purpose those are the four rolled steel sections which can be used or the fabricated sections right fabricated section can be a t section obviously can also be a angle section because when it is an angle section it is like this when it is a t section it is like this or if it is a fabricated bulb section like this you just weld a round bar this is referred to as a round bar right you have square bar you have round bar okay well so that is what uh, are the basic structural components or the basic building blocks of the subsequent structures which will be used which will be using to develop the entire ship or the offshore platform even right well so yeah. Uh, are the two lengths which are there in flat on the plane, hmm. are they particular angle or always at 90 degree? 90 degree, always at 90 degree. Okay. They are always at 90 degree, right? Same thing, T section, always at 90 degree, right? Okay, so these are the, these are all the uh, basically rolled steel sections or fabricated sections which uh, constitute your longitudinal uh, stiffener or transverse stiffener, right? They will be either referred to as longitudinal stiffener or transverse stiffener. Now, there are other terms used which are referred to as girders, right? Girders, also transverses, right? Girders is nothing but longitudinal stiffener of heavier scantling. They are referred to as girder. They are nothing but they are also longitudinal stiffener, but bigger scantling. Say when my stiffener is uh, 100 by 12 or 200 into 125 into 13. So, well, longitudinal stiffener, but when it is becoming 500 by 400 and so on and so forth, that means a bigger scantling is referred to as garter. Same thing, a transverse stiffener, when it is of bigger scantling, we simply call it transverse, just transverse, that, that name is also used, transverses, right. Now, when these girders and transverses or this longitudinal uh, stiffener or transverse stiffener used in different location, it assumes different names. For example, if I look into a deck, deck of a ship, you have already done lines plan, is not it? So, it is somewhat like this. I am drawing only half of the deck, right? And let us assume that these dotted lines I am drawing, you have heard about something called bulkheads? No. Okay. For the time being, uh, let me just mention that they, they are also some of the structural component, right? Which are referred to as bulkhead. We will look into this later, bulkhead. So, bulkhead, one of the function is they divide, they subdivide the ship in different components, different compartments. 
stations are imaginary locations that is needed to facilitate your drawing for the drawing purpose. They are imaginary locations there you are subdividing the vessel in 10 equal stations, 20 equal stations, but bulkheads are physical locations of plated structure. They are plates, stiffened plates. These dotted lines are nothing but stiffened plates. They are the plated structure. I mean, well, we can we can talk about bulkhead a little more. Say this is my anyway. Say this is a simple profile of a vessel and uh, those vertical lines which I showed you in the deck plan. Once again, I am redrawing them as if here. So, this is nothing but I have divided the ship in 5 distinct compartments. And if these bulkheads are continuous right from the bottom shell to the main deck, all along in the along the girth of the vessel right watertight then these are referred to as watertight subdivision bulkheads right these are referred to as watertight subdivision bulkheads bulkhead water light not water tight water tight subdivision bulkhead that means each the entire ship has been divided in five independent watertight compartments okay all right so again coming back to that so these dotted lines in the deck plan i can see like this there is a continuous plate isn't it now let us assume the deck is longitudinally stiffened that means it has those stiffening members it would be either a angle section or a bulb section generally these stiffeners will be either angle or bulb not generally flat bars can you tell me why these stiffeners which i am putting in the deck i am saying it will be generally bulb section or angle section more strength yeah <clears throat> more strength is needed for the deck you need more st stiffness because the deck will be subjected to maximum stress maximum i mean because uh, uh, because it is furthest away from the global neutral axis so you need more strength so to provide more strength or more stiffness you need some stiffening arrangement or some kind of stiffener which will provide you higher section modulus. Why not T sections? Yeah, why not T sections that will come later when you will see the actual cross section of a vessel, when you will see with what, what kind of arrangements of these, because as I said, these are the basic building blocks. I use them to my requirement. So, we will see why not T. You see that. So, anyway, the, these are the then longitudinal stiffener and since they are used in deck, we call them as deck longitudinal. So, I give a name to this stiffening members, I call them deck longitudinal. So, when I call, I refer to a stiffener by deck longitudinal, I know that is a stiffener I am talking about which is connected in the deck, right. Similarly, <clears throat> well, now let us see what I have drawn here, what it could be. They are the openings, hatch openings, right. This is the hatch opening, that means the deck is cut here, right. I have done three hatch openings. What about this? There is an engine room. So, I have not drawn the hatch opening there. You will have to have some compartment which is dedicated for the machineries. So, generally it is the uppermost. Uppermost is this compartment obviously. 
but that we are not going because there we do not have much space. That is the section where it is something like this, this is the up peak. Right? So, here generally we have the engine room and these are the holds, cargo holds. So, anyway I have drawn three hatch opening. Now, think of this particular uh, deck longitudinal which I am just again overwriting with this red color. Why? It must have something in special. What is that speciality? Let me continue this in the engine room also. Is there any speciality of this? Speciality is that it is just at the end of the hatch opening. You have the hatch opening just at the end of the hatch opening, right? So, it derives a special name that is instead of saying end of the hatch opening is at the side of the hatch opening that will be a better way because I give a name hatch side girder right hatch side girder since that longitudinal is right at the side of the hatch opening so, I have given a special name hatch side girder and mind you I am not saying hatch side longitudinal, I am saying hatch side girder that automatically implies its scantlings are higher, right. If we just take a look, suppose I take a section here which is referred to as midship section. Let us draw this is a little bigger. This is my center line. I have the deck plating, this is my hatch opening, right. So, there I have we have drawn one two longitudinals and the red one. So, just to match that, let us assume the longitudinals are unequal angles. And the red one, like this, right. So, <coughs> these are my deck longitudinals and this is the hatch side girder it is of greater length, greater scantling, right. Why suddenly this is greater compared to these? Well, as far as what should be the scantling of these, scantling of the deck, what is the scantling of deck means what? Thickness of the deck plating, right. Side shell, here also we will have to have some stiffening arrangement we will come to that later. So, all that we will do all this layout of this uh, stiffening arrangement the stiffeners etcetera to achieve what? To achieve the section modulus certain required section modulus at deck as well as at keel is not it? This y deck and y keel is nothing but this is my y keel right and anyway these drawings are not very good, but you can understand this y deck right. So, section modulus about the neutral axis divided by the scale this distance or this distance will give you either of this section modulus. There is a requirement of how much the section modulus should be based on what should be the permissible stress on the deck and the keel based on that. Anyway, so we will come to this why this is certainly bigger, but let us now only see about the 
let us look about uh, uh, about uh, just the uh, different types of uh, st stiffeners. So, deck longitudinal hatch side garter. Then now you see if I have a just a skim of like this in this fashion, then do not you think that it becomes quite nice, but it does not show much members which will provide transverse strength also. It is showing a good longitudinal strength because I have longitudinal members. Mind you, here we have drawn only three longitudinal members, it is never like that. It will be several depending on the dimension. There is a fixed spacing, right? Fixed means well, you will decide on the spacing how much. So, on that spacing it will be put. Here we are only schematically showing. Okay, so to provide for transverse strength, you will have to have transverse member also. So, suppose let us put transverse member like this. So, more or less in this fashion the transverse members will be repeated. All the transverse members I have drawn in red, by red I am signifying a greater scantling. Right? So, what we have drawn? This extreme two red transverses, these two lines which represent transverse because they are in the transverse plane, right? they are at the hatch ends. So, we call them hatch end beam hatch end beam this derives a name hatch end beam right and the middle one somewhere in the middle it is the a transverse member and that to in the deck so deck transverse It is referred to as deck transverse. What is the difference between this transverse in this particular case and the longitudinals? It is the longitudinals are much closely spaced, whereas the transverse are very widely spaced. Right? So, this is a longitudinal framing system. This type of arrangement is a arrangement based on longitudinal framing system. So, if my deck is stiffened like in this fashion, we will say that deck is stiffened longitudinally or longitudinal framing system has been adopted for stiffening the deck. So, primary members are the longitudinals and the supporting members are the transverses. So, we will see what are the specific function of this hatch side girder or the deck longitudinal or the hatch and beams or deck transverses. On what basis you locate the deck transverse? As far as hatch and beam and hatch side gutter is concerned, it is fixed because I know the dimension of my hatch opening. That is dictated by some other requirement. Little bit we have talked about. In container ship, you have very wide opening. In bulk area, you will have a narrower opening and so on and so forth. So, that will dictate the location of hatch side and girder and hatch and beams and the location of deck transverse etcetera how we will see in the next class. Okay. Mm -hmm.